I think I've had enough comments now where people ask about my full audio chain that it's prompted me to do a video about it, and this is that video. I've really put a lot of thought into each component of it, and that's why I really think it does the job of exponentially more expensive gear, and in my opinion, is the signal chain of the gods. So I'll show you the whole chain bit by bit, and I really want to focus on what's important and what's not important in the chain, and that's because I recommending gear that people don't need brings me no joy. It's not it's not what I enjoy doing and it's not what this channel is about. Instead, a bit later in the video, I want to see if I can replicate the sound of this circa three grand signal chain for around 93% less, about 200 pounds. So far, you've been hearing the full fat rig, but this is what the 93% cheaper version sounds like. I kind of like it. I think it's alarmingly close to my full fat rig and I'll show you how I did it in just a bit. I've timestamped everything in this video, so you can just skip around to the bits you want, and I'm on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, and it would really make my day if you could take the time to hit that subscribe button. Um, it really just um, helps the channel and, um, you know, puts a smile on my face, and I appreciate it. Uh, thank you in advance. This video is not sponsored, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds that I get from Patreon, I put back into the channel and I do reviews and then I give the gear away. Like right now, I have, I think, three giveaways running for a total of around $800 worth of gear. So, you know, get down there. Um, it's a great way to support the channel. Uh, it's inexpensive and um, you can win some cool stuff. So yeah, onward. First off is my microphone of choice, and that is the Warm Audio WA47. It's there. And I recently reviewed it, and really the reason why I chose this mic, uh, let's hide it again, is because it's a cheap microphone with that K47 style capsule, which is known for being extremely flattering on voice with its rich low end, soft and silky mid range and slightly rolled off classy sounding highs. So it's a condenser mic, it's a tube circuit, it, you get a little bit of flavour from that capsule, but what's really important here? I would say the fact that it is a condenser mic and the way that it's positioned. I always like to position my condenser mics reasonably close because I like a little bit, not too much, proximity effect. You know, that little fattening of the bass that you get. And um, I also did a video recently where I showed you how I hide this microphone and of course I'll link that below. The next link in the chain is my preamp and for that I use a Heritage Audio Brit Strip channel strip which is a Neve 1073 series clone preamp and EQ with a compressor which is pretty close to the legendary Neve 2254 compressor. Buy the original Neve versions and it'll set you back the best part of three and a half grand. So the Brit Strip at under half that price is still super high end, but kind of relatively good value. And, you know, one of the more characterful sounding channel strips. But what's actually important here? Well, as I'm not a preamp guy, I would say that the difference sonically that a preamp makes is kind of imperceptibly small to the point of not really making any difference. I've tested this extensively in the past and that's just, that's just my experience. I'm not saying that, you know, good signal to noise ratio, good components, you know, noise floor, all of that kind of stuff. These things really do matter, but I, I can't in good conscience sit here and tell you that buying a preamp will be a transformative stage in your signal path. However, the EQ and compression stages in this Brit Strip are tone shaping stages and they will noticeably make a difference. In anticipation of the comments asking me to share my compressor and EQ settings, I have already done a video about this pretty recently. It's called How to Set a Compressor for VoiceOver. It's packed full of goodies and I will link it. It's worth a watch. So from the output of my Brit Strip, it goes into the line in of my solid state Logic SSL 12 audio interface. This is a bit of a bargain interface with plenty of IO options and captures audio at up to 32 bit, 192 kilohertz, which is fairly rare. And as it's going into the line in, I'm not using the preamps, just the AD conversion. So what's important here? Well, I would say almost nothing. 
the way I'm using it, tonally, I don't think you'd notice the difference between this, between a much cheaper option, or an eye-wateringly expensive version. The last step in the chain is, of course, the audio goes into my DAW, which is Logic. And I have recently done a video called, uh, I think I call it My Five Steps to Sweetening Your Audio. And um, that's definitely worth a look because, you know, the, the five subtle steps to kind of, um, yeah, like I said, sweetening your audio. And it, it really does make a good difference. Um, so check that one out. I'll link it. So that's the chain. And I expect lots of people will have something to say about this. And I kind of expecting some elitism to rear its ugly head. I'm kind of expecting to hear that the warm audio mic isn't as good as an original Neumann U47 and that the Heritage Audio Brit Strip's not as good as the Neve equivalents, and the SSL 12's not as good as some hideously expensive, I don't know, Antelope Audio or equivalent rack unit. So, I will respond in anticipation. Firstly, I never said this was a money, no object signal path. In fact, all it is is a signal path that's filled with, in my opinion, quite sensible purchases. Secondly, everything I said about the gear is subjective. And when it comes to this kind of equipment, I've noticed that those elitists sometimes have difficulty distinguishing between fact and opinion. This warm audio microphone likely doesn't sound the same as a vintage Neumann U47. I know that. And you know what? I've owned so many mics in the past and I absolutely love the way this sounds. And you know what? It leaves you with a spare 23,000 in your back pocket. The Britstrip uses either the same or equal components to that of the Neve gear. Certainly nothing to qualify as being less high-end from an objective point of view. And as for the converters in the SSL 12, well, I just hope that the viewers of this are enlightened about the subject of converters because I can tell you from my experience, I've used so many quite high-end uh, systems in the past from, you know, Prism, uh, Universal Audio, uh, Antelope Audio, Apogee, um, a, lot, a lot of others, I can't even think. And to my, in my experience, they make as near as makes no difference, no difference to your sound. These days, they're basically all really good and any differences that, you know, we all thought there were back in the day have disappeared. Really, the bigger deal with the SSL 12 is that 32-bit. So tallying the cost of all of that aforementioned gear that's apparently better than my chain, you know, the vintage Neumann, the Neve double rack system and fancy converters, you're looking at the best part of, I mean, over 40 grand for that. And mine sits at just 7% of the cost of that expensive gear. So I wondered, is it possible to replicate the sound of my chain for 7% of the roughly three grand that it costs? I, want, I wanted to find out, let's see. Well, yes, sort of, with a bit of work that is. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic from a really good reputable brand, one that you can get used for around £50. The brand and model I don't think is as important, remember, as the fact that it's a condenser mic, and the fact that it's positioned nice and close. I've got this going straight into my SSL 12 using the stock preamps, and the reason for this is that I wanted to simulate using the much cheaper SSL 2, which uses the same preamps. That, of course, doesn't have 32 bits, so instead I'm recording in 24 bit, so it is essentially identical to using the cheaper version. Then, of course, I'm going into Logic, where I'm doing some clever things to, you know, kind of manipulate the sound a little bit. Let me show you. Okay, so here we are in Logic, and the first thing to note is it doesn't really matter which program you're using, because most software has equivalents of the ones that I'm going to use today. Here's what it sounds like without anything except for my limiter, which I just leave on all the time because I don't want to risk it clipping at any point. Well, yes, sort of. With a bit of work, that is. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic from a really good reputable brand, one that you can get used for around £50. 
right, let's get to work. And I want to see if I can use some trickery to kind of mimic the cool pieces of gear I've got in this chain. And the first thing I'm going to grab is a saturation tool. In Logic, I really like Fat Effects. It's basically the only one, but it is very good. But you know, whatever software you're using should have something like this. And you'll see, I'm just going to turn off everything except for this distortion tool. I could go for the tube option because in this case, I'm trying to mimic a little bit of that tube harmonic distortion you get, but I prefer the soft saturation setting on this plugin. Around 30% will do it. And this is what it sounds like. Well, yes, sort of. With a bit of work, that is. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic from a really good, reputable brand, one that you can get used for around £50. Next, I want to try and kill two birds with one stone, and that's to replicate the sound that the capsule from the microphone imparts on the sound, and then what the EQ section imparts from the preamp. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to reach for the amazing Match EQ tool in Logic. This is pretty mind-blowing if you've not tried it before. So I'm just going to click learn and then hit play and let it learn the frequency spectrum of our current clip. Then I'm going to click the reference tab and drag in a reference clip. And I'm actually using all of the audio that I used for the rest of this video using my full signal path. So in theory, this will give us a little bit of the nuance from that chain. That's loaded in. So we're going to click on the EQ curve tab and then click match. And it's going to give us this awesome EQ curve that's going to get us a lot closer to the sound of the audio I've captured from my main chain. Here's what it sounds like. Well, yes, sort of. With a bit of work, that is. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic. Next, I'm aware that the signal will have passed through a big transformer from the preamp. And like I said before, I'm not a believer that this imparts a huge difference to your tone. However, I am willing to just drop a plugin on and let it do something. And that's why I'm using the Vintage Console EQ in Logic. There are lots of kind of Neve clone plugins you could try instead of this. I'm just going to bump the drive up a little bit and this is what it sounds like. Well, yes, sort of. With a bit of work, that is. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic. Finally, there's the compression, and you can see I've used some pretty common settings. Gentle ratio, I've dialed in the threshold, so it's gonna be knocking off maybe between zero and five dB. And this is going to fairly closely replicate what my Brit strip is doing on the compressor section. Here's what it sounds like. Well, yes, sort of. With a bit of work, that is. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic. The last thing I want to do is just add an instance of TDR Nova, which is a free plugin, and it's a dynamic EQ, and I'm just using it as a de -esser. and I've got it set fairly subtle, so it's not taking off much. And I'm just doing this because I do this same thing when I record my voiceover audio. So there we go. Let's now hear a final before and then after and see what we think. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic from a really good, reputable brand, one that you can get used for around 50 pounds. You're hearing it now, and I'm using an inexpensive condenser mic from a really good, reputable brand, one that you can get used for around 50 pounds. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to cite that old adage that gear doesn't really matter, it's the way you use it but also that, you know, more expensive gear gets you to where you want to be quicker. Do you agree? Anyway, that, that is all for now. That's this video. And um, what did I miss? Do you agree? Definitely let me know in the comments section. I want to hear from you and I'm down there as much as I can be. I've now made hundreds of these videos about audio and video of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.